Then the second wife, how long did y'all date? Uh, that was very short. <laughs> <laughs> how long y'all married? We were married about a, uh, a year, about a year. So you're not afraid of commitment, I see. No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> and so uh, what made you marry the second wife? I rushed. I didn't want to be alone. Mm, that's good. Yeah, that's good. I didn't that's want good. to be alone, and I was going through something, and she was there to kind of help me go through it. That's good. That's good. Y'all hear that? He yeah. said his loneliness drove him to marry that's someone. Yeah. So you're making a lifetime commitment, quote unquote, yeah. for something that's temporary. Yeah. Because loneliness is only temporary. Yeah, absolutely. Loneliness yeah. is only temporary. I never imagined my public healing would inspire others to heal across the world. I thank you for using him to reach the world with the message of hope in relationships. But your life does not. God, you are my publicist. We laugh. <laughs> we share the unadulterated truth. He said, not only have I not divorced you, I ain't exposed you. Oh. We didn't marry fans, we married forever. And we wanted forever to act like a fan. Reveal her, Jesus. I will not compromise mm -mm. on getting a woman to God. You don't have to. And Father, I declare for his future wifey, thank you for preserving her. This season, I declare miracles and manifestations. See, you're selling scripts. And you're unique. You ain't like nobody else. I, I noticed that right away. You being true to who you are, you're going to attract. Mm. It's a Hebrew word, chayil, and it was translated wealth, and it means people. It means men, it means resources, and it means means. I'm Lateris R. Whitfield, and this is the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, Lateris R. Whitfield. If you're tuning in to us online, are you still shacking up with us? If you're still shacking up with us, hit that subscription button and subscribe. Make sure you turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified about upcoming episodes. Man, I'm in the 757 right now. <laughs> Norfolk VA, how are y'all doing? Healing Word Fellowship, man. It's going to be an amazing time today. Uh, man, we, haven't, we have assembled a great uh, panel of people that believe in keeping it lit. Now, on the Dear Future Wifey podcast, we coined the phrase lit to mean living intentionally and transparently. And in the church, we have we do a, oftentimes a poor job of being transparent. Uh, we like to hide with masks on our face, not revealing who we really are and what God has delivered us from. But the Bible says that people will be overcome by the word of our testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. And so it's imperative that we actually walk in transparency so people can see the goodness of God. Amen? Amen. Well, I love your bishop. Your bishop is a visionary. And um, for him, I met him. Well, we're we going we gonna to introduce him later. We're going to talk about that later because I, I love this dude. But uh, first, we're going to introduce uh, the amazing panelists that we have today. Um, give it up for Erica DeShields and her amazing husband, Marcus DeShields. The prophetess, Keisha James, y'all. Bishop Jermon James. Tania Legrand. Ramondo Anderson and Aisha Key. So the reason why I love your bishop so much is that, like I said, he's a visionary. I met him in Dallas, Texas when I was tag team preaching with my pastor, uh, Evan Connor, and immediately after service, he and I clicked. I love where, uh, the, the atmosphere that y'all have at Healing Word. Y'all are healing and deliverance ministry. Come on, somebody. And so you don't see a lot of that anymore. You don't see people that focus on deliverance. And so this is a perfect podcast to, to be brought to your church. And your, your bishop, being the visionary that he is, he saw value in what I do. And I honor you, man of God, for actually seeing the value in what I do. And um, I honor you for that. I really, really do. Amen. Um, so what we do here, we gonna, one thing he said, he gave me full permission. We're going to keep it lit. He said, hey, I don't want people on the panel that's not going to keep it real. Um, he believes in transparency and people being vulnerable. And so uh, we got a great group of people that are going to do exactly that. Um, so we're going to start on the end down there to the, the Shields. How y'all doing? doing great. All right. 
Doing good. Doing great. How long have y'all been married? We've been married a year and four months now. A year and four months. Y'all have an interesting journey. How did y'all meet? Um, we met on Facebook. <laughs> Modern day dating. Uh huh. We met on Facebook in this um, group called um, Waiting Until Marriage. Yeah, I promise to wait. You promise to wait on what? Yeah, abstinence. Okay, so you're you keep abstaining it. until marriage. You gotta be specific. So you you, you said do. you're gonna wait <laughs> to have relations, amen, yes. uh, mm -hmm. until you get married. Uh huh. Uh huh. And what made you decide to do that? Um, I was already on the journey um, of abstaining, and so I joined the group to be encouraged and kind of be amongst people who wasn't like-minded. And Marcus, I was abstaining since like 2008. 2008. Um, at that time. Mm. I want you to say a little louder for the people in the back. You said since when? <laughs> you said 2008. 2008. And what year was this when you met her? 2017. Say it again. But yeah. 2017. So I want to see if the math is massing. How many years was you uh, abstaining? Well, when we got married, it was close to 14. 14? When we got married. We got married in 21. Yeah. And then what made you decide to do that? Ooh. Man. <laughs> Tell <me. laughs> So I was in and out of relationships. Um, Man, and it was just, God got to a point where he was saying, if you want this, why you keep doing this? And I was like, okay, God. And, but it got, so women were coming in and out of my life. And I was like, man, but this ain't it. So I had a conversation with the man and woman of God one time. And we went to lunch and it kind of changed my whole perspective. And then on that journey, and it got rocky. I had to, I had to flee sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not gonna say it was here where I, I had to run sometimes, but I abstained it, and uh, yeah, it was, a, it was worth the wait. I want to hear how I want. What does the running look like? <laughs> I, I'm trying to see if it's a Joseph moment where you just left your robe somewhere. Yeah, it was definitely some Joseph moments. Like clothes were off, and I was like, oh Lord, I had to leave the room. Yeah, absolutely. Amen. Yeah, it's Amen. A <laughs> All right. And so y'all met on Facebook. Was it on Facebook dating or y'all were just perusing? Y'all was just. This was just a group. So when you're in different groups, whatever your interest may be, um, this was just a particular group that both of us ended up in. Um, and I had been in a group for about a year, never commented, never posted anything. I just was, like I say, I was more so looking for um, people to post things to just encourage me in my weight. And um, he actually came from a, a singles meeting here that night and he posted a post about when is a good time to kiss, whether you're dating, committed, or waiting to, until marriage. And I commented mistakenly because I thought it was an administrative post, not that it was somebody posting in the group. And I commented. No, what you say? He slid in my DM. So, so, uh, so, so, what, so what did you say? What, when did you say it was a good time to kiss? I was so New Orleans, I was like, baby, let me tell you something. We gotta be committed because I ain't gonna be kissing no anybody. <laughs> and obviously, he liked it that. You liked it that? I loved it. So, so what was your viewpoint? When's a good time to kiss? I and be committed in a committed relationship, so. He said, wait till marriage. You said, wait till marriage? Talking, he was like, I think we should wait till I went there to kiss, and I was like, you want to kiss at the altar, so not only are you waiting to have sexual relations, but you're going to wait to kiss at the altar. you real saved, huh? Hold on. Hold on. I got to help him out. I got to help him out. you real saved. I got to help Mark out. I'm going to help you out. This Mark, he, his, his past, he was trying to stay away from calls and things or certain feelings to come where if he couldn't get it from you, he'll find somebody else. So a lot of people don't understand, if you have a commitment with a person, and you all in with that person, if you're not getting it, and then certain, some of my old feelings start coming, yeah. I'm not going to mess it up with you, so I'll just get in my black book, and, and I'm going to find somebody that can release this tension. Uh -oh. yeah. So good. at least I ain't messed it up with her. Yeah. And so we got to do it. But one thing, man of God, is what I love, what Marcus was, um, was alluding to, is that I shared with him, my wife and I, is that you place the order, but you're out of order. Mm. Amen. Mm. 
So he placed the order for a wife, right. but he was out of order doing other things. Mm. And we said, you got to get yourself in order so the order can come to pass. Amen. 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 Absolutely. See, Amen. That's good. Good. Definitely. I was trying to do something different. So it was like, you know, I had kiss. And kissing used to start stuff with me. Right. So I was like, you know, I She said everybody. <laughs> she said it starts off with everybody. <laughs> so I seen her as when we finally did meet. So she, we, we didn't talk about this. In the beginning, I said committed. But when we actually met, that's when I said tell marriage. So right. that's, that's what happened. Amen. <laughs> All right, we're going to come back on y'all. I wasn't in agreement. You weren't in agreement? <laughs> There's always one. There's always one. <laughs> <laughs> That's that New Orleans. They didn't know. <laughs> she said, I ain't going to be waiting that long. Um, and so, um, no, let's go ahead and unpack this real quick. So what made you decide to marry her? What was it in her that you saw her as the wife for you? It was almost like she was in the congregation with me. So when we started talking, the, the, um, the values, I was like, okay. And we talked for, I mean, through Messenger for hours. And I'm like... Okay, like, so I had to ask her, I said, where are you from? She said, New Orleans. I said, New Orleans? Where you live? Right. New Orleans. <laughs> I was like, oh, Lord. Uh, mm, ah, mm, okay. <laughs> so she said something to me in the midst of the conversation that kind of got my faith going. She said, we were talking about like children and stuff like that. She was like, don't miss out on your blessing. And I was like, mm. okay. But the crazy thing is, she gave the fight. I was in. I was all in. I was like, okay, God, I see this. I don't know how you're going to do it, but I can see this happening. And. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. Tania, are you single? I am single. How long have you been single? Oh. As you exhale. <laughs> I have been single this year. It will be 13 years. 13 years. Yes. Have you ever been married before? I have not. Um, how do you feel being single in this season of your life? Um, I have hope. Um, I am excited about what God is doing because I truly believe that um, I will be married. I truly Amen. believe that. Amen. Um, at my age, um, there are some people who don't have hope um, when you're in, I'm not going to tell y'all my whole age, but <laughs> <laughs> I am um, settled into my 40s. And some people don't believe that you're going to get married. But I believe that I am meant to be somebody's wife. Amen. 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 Um, how has these dating streets been treating you? <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, dating, <laughs> um, dating has been interesting. Um, it, it has run the gamut. I've had someone tell me that I needed to earn someone open an, opening a door for me. Okay. You open oh, wow. the door for a stranger. I have yeah. to earn you opening the door? Yeah. So, bye-bye. Um, I had someone invite me out to an event, um, and he happened to invite someone else, and we knew each other. Um, I had someone who decided, and it's funny, I have a twin sister, the same thing in a week, the same thing happened to us both, um, someone decided in a week that he wanted to um, imagine me naked. Mm -hmm. And so you want pictures <laughs> and you want to put imagery. Mm -hmm. And so I said, you know what, Lord, um, my picker is broken. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to let you do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I do realize that I can't just stay in the house mm -hmm. and not be seen. Because I did say for, at a moment, uh, he's going to have to find me in the grocery store. He's going to have to find me at church. Or he's going to have to find me at work because the dating pool has pee in it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Exactly. <laughs> I, I'm so sorry. And a, and a few other things. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's where I am in a nutshell. So when's the last time you've been on a date? Um, it was about a year ago. A year ago. Do you believe in being on dating sites? Yes. Oh, she said that happened. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what dating sites are you on? I'm not on any yet, and I'll tell you why. Um, I'm a little nervous. Um, 
in December, I had um, one friend tell me, okay, Tania, you need to get on a, a dating site. She's in here. And um, it's been five people within the past, um, within this past few months that have said to me, you need to, uh, I've, I've prayed and I've seen that your husband is coming. And you know, people say that all the time to, to single people, but mm. there are some <laughs> instruments. I'm like, where he at? But, uh, <laughs> however, <laughs> I do believe that he's coming. And I, I, like I said, I know that um, dating sites are, can be intimate. We're modern day. Yeah. Um, Erica. Hey. Yeah. Has, uh, you know, and, and uh, Marcus's story has helped me. So I, I'm, I'm about to get in these dating streets. Amen. There it is. Amen. I have to position myself to be seen. There it is. There it I, is. I no longer want to be hidden. There it is. Good. Ramondo. Ramondo, Ramondo. I love talking to brothers that are, that are single. Uh, is it on? There, there it is. Go. There it is. There it is. It is lit. All right. Now say something. Yes, sir. All right, Ramondo. So, Ramondo, um, are you single? Yes. I want to make sure you say that publicly because it may be some <laughs> woman that says, "Oh, for real? You single for real?" So you may she may think that y'all together. And then, so so the question is, <laughs> so the question is this, Ramondo. Uh, how long have you been single? I've been single for four years. Four years. Uh, you've been married before, right? Yes, I have. How many times have you been married? I've been married twice. Twice. Uh, what have you learned about yourself having been married twice? I've learned about myself that it takes time, patience, and a lot of faith in God. Do you feel like your faith was strengthened after those two marriages? Oh, yeah. Tell definitely. me how. <laughs> uh, well, it was definitely strengthened because I learned from both women, you know, both times. And each did, uh, situation, because they were not from the same state. One was from St. Louis and one was from Virginia. So, you know, they carried, had their own different beliefs and, you know, yeah. and their faith and their walk. So, but I learned how to uh, communicate with them and to build a relationship with them while, while I was with them. But at the same time, I had to work on me, you know. So I was reading my word, you know, like I said, with my first, like I shared with you. My first wife, we were in church, you know, and we were serving and everything. And um, that was just a good time for me. And I was really in my word during that time, too, and just taking time to reflect on me. So you were married the first time. How long were you married? Uh, three years. You were married three years. What made you decide to marry said first wife? I married first wife because I really believe that God, I, we were equally yoked. You know, we took a lot of time, like, you know, Marcus... Like you said, you know, you took a lot of time and you, you know, conversations yeah. online. You know, we went on a lot of dates and everything. And uh, I was in a new city. I was in a place I had never been, you know. And so it was refreshing to me. So she was showing me around like, I, you know, I was a tourist. Yeah. <laughs> so we had a good time, you know, just building something together. Me, we built a friendship and then I ended up marrying her. Uh, how long did you date her before you decided to marry her? We dated for about a year, a year and a half, a year and a half. And then we came back here. And y'all been how, how long? Uh, we were married three years. Married we, three years. Yeah, we dated for a year and a half. And then the second wife, how long did y'all date? Uh, that was very short. <laughs> <laughs> how long y'all married? We were married about a, uh, a year, about a year. So you're not afraid of commitment, I see. No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> And so, uh, what made you marry the second wife? I rushed. I didn't want to be alone. Mm, that's good. Yeah, that's good. I didn't that's want good. to be alone, and I was going through something, and she was there to kind of help me go through it. That's good. That's good. Y'all hear that? He yeah. said his loneliness drove him to marry that's someone. Good. Yeah. So you're making a lifetime commitment, quote unquote, yeah. for something that's temporary. Yeah. Because loneliness is only temporary. Yeah, absolutely. Loneliness is only temporary. And so uh, you were married a little over a year. And um, now where you're at, are you in the season now where you want to remarry? Yes, but I'm open to, you know, dating and everything first. I don't want to rush. I'm not going to rush into this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let me, let me wait it out, you know. And I'm at that age where, you know, I'm, I'm not ready to just jump in. All right, so um, what does dating look like for you now? Do you actually 
meet women online? Are you on dating sites? You meet people? Facebook dating. Facebook dating? <laughs> Facebook dating. That. That's it. So you do actually go on dates? Uh, I haven't been on any, but I'm open to them. Like so you're on Facebook dating, but you ain't dating? <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> He's taking it real slow, ain't he? <laughs> There's some crazy stuff out here. Uh, y'all already know. You already know. You already know. These profiles, y'all got to read through the words and abbreviations and stuff. It's, you got to look into that, you know. And then spiritual don't mean that they, you know that. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I ain't even going to touch on that. So. No, we're going to touch on it. You want to touch so, on that? Yeah, so okay. you said spiritual doesn't mean what? Spiritual don't mean they praise God. They don't go to church. Yeah. <laughs> you don't pay tithes. <laughs> they, don't mean, they don't mean that. Y'all don't know what kind of spirits they got on them. You know, they got a little... They're wearing rocks around their necks. Yeah. I mean, I'm just being honest with y'all. There's yeah. a lot of people out here doing some other extra stuff, and I'm not about that extra and, stuff. And I'm glad you said that, because a lot of times people say, well, I, you know, I don't go to church. I'm not a Christian, but I'm mm. spiritual. Mm. And then sometimes people go, oh, that's great. Yeah, they're spiritual. You don't know what spirit they worship. Yeah. So you got to be very specific to be like, hold on, let me ask you, who do you worship? Yeah. Who, do you, who do you kneel before? Who is your mm. life submitted to? Amen. And not just say, I'm spiritual. Because that's not good enough, especially like you said, Ramondo, is that people worshiping everything. Uh, they walking around uh, waving sage all in the house, trying to whip. No, I need you to be able to pray. I don't need, I don't need no sage. I need you to be able to anoint my pillow. I need you to be able to lay hands on me. I need you to be able to get down on your knees and lay prostrate before the Lord and worship. I, I, don't, I don't need you waving no sage and no little stones on the side of the house. No, I need. Mm -mm. We're not gonna. We're not gonna do that. I'm good. All right, Aisha. Now, Aisha Key, this is, this, this is my homie. Uh, when, I, when I was doing prison ministry, I met her in prison. And, you know, so uh, we bonded. We bonded in prison ministry. And, uh, now, Aisha, funny. Aisha, how's these dating streets been treating you? Put the microphone to your mouth. We got to hear every word you say. It, it's been, it hasn't been good. Why, why hasn't it been good, Aisha? These people crazy. They crazy. Is it these people or are you these people? <laughs> So Aisha, you had a come to Jesus moment over the years where God had to reveal uh, you to you. Yes. So you had to reveal who you are to yourself. What was one of the biggest things that God had to deliver you from? Fight. Fight. <laughs> Aisha had a Sophia from Color Purple anointing, <laughs> and she liked to fight people. Lord. All my life I had to fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So now y'all see why I met her in prison ministry. <laughs> so Aisha, what was it about you that caused you anytime you met adversity, you want to put your hands on people and not in a biblical sense? I didn't know how to uh, communicate properly. Yeah. I didn't know how to use my words. Um, I was, and I was angry, so you, you say something to me, I ain't like it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> So what did dating look like? Did you feel like you were uh, the aggressor if you were dating a guy and he did some suspect that you would push him upside the head or punch yes. him in the face? You, yes, you would. I was the aggressor, yes. Um, if I was dating and he said something that I didn't like, look here, I'm a <laughs> warning. <laughs> You're about to get these hands. <laughs> So when you look back on that as God is taking you through this journey, what, what do you think caused that? What happened in your childhood that caused you to respond uh, physically? Again, um, being the youngest and the youngest of my sisters and brothers was older. They was in their 20s and stuff like that. And I was the baby, so I felt that I didn't have any words. I didn't have anything. I didn't have the, what's the, uh, yeah, the language to to to, to, to uh, voice your feelings. Exactly. There you go. Yeah. To say how I felt. So um, they was always, you know, oh, you a child, stay in the child's place, whatever, whatever. And once I got older, I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> 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 no, be you. Right. Be you. I need all the Aisha to show up. Go ahead and talk. <laughs> so people can see why you used to swing on people. And, you know, go ahead. Be you. <laughs> but, you know, as I got older, I felt that, look here, I needed to defend myself. Right. I had, look, you ain't going to talk to me any kind of way. You ain't going to do all that you thought you was going to do, or you're going to have some problems with me. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, and um, Bishop, you, you've had some interaction with old sister. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. And um, how? Oh, yes. Aisha, I tell you. Uh, it takes fasting and praying. When they say got to be a rough neck. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, oh, my. I'm going to tell you. I mean, tell, we thank God for it. We knew she was from New York. Yeah, Brooklyn. Amen, amen. Brooklyn, huh? Look, one time, one time we were trying to help her. Amen, amen. I said, oh, I had to get God. that scripture. You got to lay hands on the sit so that she had recover. Because she was looking at us like, hold on. Y'all want some of these hands too? I'm like, oh, Bishop, no. Bishop, talk about the time when she uh, met with us and she had her letter read the letter. Oh, Jesus. And the letter was fighting words. Oh, yeah. Oh, In yeah. a letter? Mm -hmm. oh. Her letters used to fight. <laughs> Oh, yeah. she, she, read, she said, I'm going to write. Was, I'm, she read us what she was going to say. Right, right, right. <laughs> With the fight words on it. Y'all had, a, had a, a letter, too. Y'all had to read along. <laughs> yeah. Right. You remember that? <laughs> I said, Lord, this girl for real. Oh, um, but we had to interact oh, um, a few times God. with um, relationship, trying to help her through it and um, helping her through it. Um, again, all we can do is try to assist. Yep. And then the individual has the desire to be covered while they're dating. This is why I always say, I know a lot of people say dated, and I understand it, um, but the closest I see is when you're courting somebody, meaning that, hey, let's see if we can paddle before we go further. Yeah. One thing I think that's missing what, what a lot of times when we're dating or courting a person is that you are putting yourself in a place where you're vulnerable to fall in love and you have not yet trusted that person and been loyal. Teach. And so if you learn how to trust and be loyal, then love will manifest. Yeah. But a lot of times you fall in love with a person and then find out you can't trust them and then find out they're not loyal. Yeah. But now you stuck inside yeah. this soul tie. You're stuck in this, in this season of your life that if you don't be careful, it'll take you three, four, five, ten years to get out of. Yeah. And then you find yourself still want to be in a relationship, but you still hurt from your past relationship. There it is. And hurt people hurt people. There it is. Yeah. And so we got to get to a place in our life that, um, I, and Aisha got there through the first one. She said, okay. And then she walked away from it. Young gentleman came, good guy. He came and um, he came, he, talk, he talked to me. And he says, um, I, 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 I like the young lady here. I want to know, and this is crazy because this guy from the street. And he come and say, he said, you know, I used to drink, I used to do all this stuff. He says, but I stopped doing all that. He says, I'm coming to church because I like this young lady, Aisha. And I want to know it's okay for us to connect, and I want your help. So you started coming to church? You started coming to church. Of, so you over here ministering to people and fighting them at the same time? <laughs> yes. Wow. The guy started coming to church, man. Wow. And was faithful. Wow. And I, and I told him, I said, somebody say something. Oh. I said she was from the west side of the kingdom. That's <laughs> yeah, she's from the west, west side. side. West side of the kingdom. And so what she, what she did was, um, I talked to her, and I told him, I said, listen, I said, Aisha been through a lot of stuff as her pastor. My wife and I know what she's been through. And all I'm asking you, if you want to pursue her, all I'm asking you, do, do not put her in a situation that cause her to compromise. That's what I told him. I say, you got to understand. I say, because if, if you do it, the old hurt going to show up. And so he said, yes, sir. But evidently, he ain't listen. Because <laughs> the old hurt manifested. <laughs> and then I, we were dealing with problem after problem after problem. Wait, Go ahead. We, we wasn't having... You, you can raise the microphone. Up. Oh, no, y'all won't have... We wasn't, we wasn't uh -uh. having, like... Sex like everybody else. Like everybody else. Like everybody else. No, you know, because in, in, okay, in my mind, um, mm -hmm. it's kids in here. I know you're talking it's about. It's in the children's church. What, what is it? How, uh, you're talking about oral. Yeah, there you go. Oral. <laughs> yeah, we was having oral sex. And because um, to me, in my mind, that wasn't having sex. That was just, okay. you know. Oh, we can do this. Do. This is a safe way. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This is a safe way. And so, and so that opened up what for you to, to bring out your old side that he was talking about? That opened up, look here, uh, can't, no, you can't talk to that girl. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you're saying when you start, uh, yeah, when you start uh, having that bond with them, right. then now you get really territorial. Exactly. I became possessive. Uh, all right, so as you became possessive, yeah, yeah. you started uh, doing what? Lashing out on him, right. going back on exactly. your... So is your first dating him that y'all... Because y'all were... Were y'all engaged at some point? Yes. So y'all were engaged in... Um, how long were y'all engaged before it was called off? Um, about, about a year. So y'all engaged for a whole year? Yeah, but we've been dating for... We was dating for about... 
we did, was together for about five years. So four of them years, um, I say about, uh, about maybe, like right before we started, right before we got engaged, that's when we started having oral sex. Then, um, then he asked me to marry him and then, um, you start bringing them in. So what made him decide to come meet with your bishop, which I have the, I mean, high respect for him to want to actually talk to him to get some type of uh, coaching and um, covering. What made him decide to come talk to your bishop? He was coming to the church and Apostle kept saying, um, this is how you should do, you should want to meet the parents right. and the, you know, parents, yeah. which they are my yeah, your spiritual parents. parents. Yeah. Right. And you should want to talk to them and get guidance and stuff like that. And he decided that that's what he was going to do. He didn't let me know anything. Oh, he didn't let you know? No. That's good. Okay. He came right to me, said, can I talk to you? And when I, and I, and I, and I still to this day respect him. I do, yeah. Um, because of that. And then even his fight, you know. But again, when, when, through life, when you make compromises, it'll shift even the thing you desire to do. Because right. in his heart of heart, he wanted her to be his wife. Right. He he wanted everything to work, but like she said, once you start crossing certain barriers, it don't matter if it's possible. It don't matter if it's a God will. We can still go against the will of God by doing certain things that puts I call it out of order sign on. And when that happened, he was fighting. Um, when I say fight, he was fighting with hope. Right. He wanted change. He wanted things. But again, when Aisha got um, in her in back in her her mess. I mean, her frustration. Right. Then she ain't want to hear nothing. Mm -hmm. And so, and but the thing is, even, and I told Aisha, I said, you're an amazing young lady. We love you. But this is the stuff that leaders try to protect you from. Right. Sometimes your leader's trying to protect you from you. Right. There it is. Right. But, but we're in a society now where they try to tell you, they trying to run you. No, I'm, no. I see ahead of what you see. Yeah. I see ahead of schedule. And what I'm seeing going on right now, if you will pump the brakes slow up, and listen to what the Spirit of the Lord's saying, you won't wreck this ship. Yeah. But if you do it, and so he tried, and then it just got to the point where they was doing so much that the communication with us got, you know how the enemy do yeah, yeah. We ain't got to tell our bishop now. We'll figure this out for ourselves. Yeah. And then it pull you out the presence. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. During, but during that time, the, the, the enemy came in, and it caused a separation between That's me it. and you. That I was, you know, that I was really in a real dark place. Amen. And, uh, you know, that, and I, I wouldn't come to you. That's right. Because any other time I would have came to you, right. you know what I mean? And because I was mad at you, I was mad with prophetess too because y'all was together. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the truth. You just mad at everybody, that's, huh? See, and that's mad why at y'all and y'all and y'all. Mad at the parking and lot that's, attended, mad and at That's everybody. why I highly respect Naisha because through all that, look what God, she's still here. Yes. Yeah. But, yeah. Because she knew that all we wanted to do was help. But when you get blinded by love, yeah. truth even not even real to you no more. I want to ask you this. What is the relationship with you and your father? I, don't have, I didn't have a relationship with me and my father. Yeah. I can, I can see that, especially when you said that, you know, when by, you know we all call, uh, a lot of us call our spiritual leaders, our parents or whatnot. But um, that, this is your covering. Right. And, and the first thing you did, abandon the, the covering. Right. Uh, because that's what you grew up with you know you never had father's covering and so oftentimes we got to go back and heal those father wounds because we'll project that on anybody else that's trying to give us a covering um and even in a leadership position because now if you'd have got married to him not been healed from that it would have been a toxic marriage and so a lot of times a delay is not a denial and so sometimes God protects us from ourselves, protects us from our own decisions. We say we want things so much. Um, like, like Tania says, she says, hey, listen, I still believe God is going to give me a husband. But in this single season is one of the most powerful seasons we can have in our lives because this is when we can do the real work. This is when we have the freedom to go ahead and go before God without any type of I got to talk to my husband this. If I'm going to go fast, I want to find this. I want to do all this. Now you're totally in union with Christ right. to be able to do whatever he has us to do. And so uh, I love the fact that your bishop said that you're still here. Right. You're still here. And so just stay on your square and, and, and allow God to do what he's going to do. All the James, prophetess and, and bishop. How did y'all meet? Oh, man, you really want to know? Yeah, I really want to know. I'll let her tell for ladies first. Ladies first. All right, probably. We, we grew up in the same neighborhood. Y'all's in the same neighborhood? Yes. 
All right, and y'all were how old when y'all met? Oh my goodness, um, you were 13? 13? Yeah. And yeah, that, he was 13 and I... <laughs> 13. <laughs> yeah. They said they can't never imagine oh, you, might 13. Have been you might have been 12. <laughs> Keep 13. He was young. Keep 13. 13 sound better. Okay, 13. <laughs> well, we were teenager, friends. Huh? Right. Lisa's a teenager. Right. Yes. 13 sound better. So you 13. And how did yes. y'all meet? Um, we lived across the street. Let me see. How did across we? Across the street, across the parking well, across lot. the parking lot. It was apartments. One yeah, across the hood. parking lot. Parking lot. <laughs> yeah, <Right. laughs> from each other. And um, I think I want to. I don't know how we became friends, to be honest. But he got a whole nother. He'll give you the spill on that. <laughs> Go give us that story. Her business. story boring already. Yeah. <laughs> Stop. Stop. I can't remember. We're just friends. We friends across the street, and we. He was 13 to 12. Okay, that's he know, would say, I wrote letters. letters. He would yeah. say a whole bunch of stuff. Ugh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, let me, let me tell the truth. <laughs> Shame the devil. Um, like I said, we stayed across the parking lot from each other. Um, I, was, I remember one day I was leaving. I was going to, I was in the eighth, gr eighth grade, and this is how we connected. Um, in the eighth grade, I'm walking with my girlfriend. With your girlfriend. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Standing at the bus stop, sucking on a lot of pot, right? So when we, when we <laughs> oh, walk. Oh, my God. So we, we walking, and then I heard this voice. What did it sound like? And, 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 and I was trying to figure out, leave my man alone. Oh, my God. Like, is that the devil oh. or the... OMG. I looked over my shoulder, and it was my friend from the neighborhood, Earth. <laughs> I said it. That's my man. What you doing with my man? And she I looked at me like, who girl. is this? The little girl. And she's scared. scared and ever since then, I was I ain't only seen joking, her. though. It was a joke. It was a joke, but not to her. It was. She broke, she said, you know what? That girl crazy. And she left you alone. And then, you know, and that was done. And the girl kicked you to the curb. Oh. And yeah, she kicked me to the curb. <laughs> it was really a joke because, for real, for real, I was 15, but I dated older people. Mm -hmm. So he was, I mean. Yeah, he looked yeah. kid. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he looked kid. Yeah, go ahead on. Yeah. She ain't saying that now, but continue. <laughs> but, 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 but. Back then, I, I Back was saying little, it though. Little whippersnapper, yeah, what you yeah. want. Yeah, what you want. But see, but when them, when them older guys, and then we'll give you a little backdrop of that. The reason she like, Bishop, and she was with older guys. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, okay, because well, I need to get to my part. <laughs> no, no, no. No, because it's, the thing is, I end up, she was dating some older guys, and I end up seeing her in the hallway crying all the time, like, what's wrong with this girl? Mm. And so I went to talk to her. And then I consoled her. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be okay. But as a young guy, oh, God. you know, little chest on them, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Just, it's going to be okay. Then she started, like, looking at me funny. I saw the little eyes. Oh. Then she Got little hearts in the eyes. Yes, and her hugs was getting to come a little longer. Yeah. My what? And I, your hugs. Your hugs. You're when embraced. I embraced her. You embraced yes. And I said, yeah, so I said, okay. <laughs> and so next thing I know, she started having her sister send letters to me. Mm. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I wish Francis was here, but she's... She's not. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, we, we probably have somebody here from school. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, so yeah. So she, was, she was sliding you notes. Know. Sliding notes. She uh, ain't had DM back then, so just yeah, sliding letters. Yeah, yeah sliding. <laughs> through her like sister. Like me circle, yes or no. Those don't yep. like no. And so yeah. we end up connecting and everything. And I'm going to say this. We end up connecting. And I was still young. So I remember going to see a movie. The movie back then oh. was... Uh, Paint the picture. Paint uh, the picture. Uh, uh, it was, the movie we went to see was Coming to Coming America. Coming to America. Yeah. And so yeah. we was at Military Circle. Oh, my God. And so I'm young, you know. And oh. so she's all trying to be, all, you know, you still a young little dude. I'm trying to see if this going to work. And so we left the movie and I came out, to be loved, to be loved. <laughs> oh, my God. And she broke up with me in the mall. Oh, <laughs> With my mama in the parking lot. I mean, my mama in the parking lot would pick us up. That's how young we were. My mom was picking us up from the movie. How old were you then? I had to be about 15. Yeah, probably about 15. I was driving since I was 11, but don't tell nobody. On <laughs> no, but, um, you weren't no 11. About no, 15. I was driving since then. So, problem is, why you break up with him in the parking lot? I, in the mall. In the mall, because to me, it was, he was too young. Immature acting. And I figured, like, yeah, this is. I mean, literally, when he did that, everybody's like turning around. I'm like, this. Oh, is... he said it loud. He did oh, that for yeah. real. Yes, everybody could hear it. And I'm like, yeah, this is not gonna work. It's not. She, He's. 
But listen, though. He's she, too immature. It's not going to work. And she broke up with me and needed a ride home. <laughs> <laughs> that's part I angry. did. I did. And I knew you won't And you think me. I'm going to give you a ride home and we ain't together. <laughs> Girl, I knew you won't go leave me. You better catch bus 21 oh cross town. Some of y'all know 21 cross town military. <laughs> too. Ooh, I did. Man, that's true. I got in the oh car my crying. My mother, like, what's wrong with you, baby? She broke up with me, boy. <laughs> what happened now? <laughs> and we had to drive home silent the whole time. Oh, God. How'd y'all reconnect? We reconnected. He got his friend to, you know, talk to me. And I was like, I might give it another try. Mm -hmm. And I did. Um, the, the reason why, he's the type of person, he, and he still does to this day, he makes me laugh. That's good. And so he's been like that from day one. But I was the, I'm the oldest of four kids. So everything was always serious to me. So, you know, the laughing and the joking, I ain't had I time, got time for. for that. Absolutely. <laughs> and so another thing was he was young and I felt my, my reason for dating older people was my dad wasn't there for me. Mm -hmm. And so really I was looking for a, a father. father. Yeah. I was looking for a father and he just was not about to be that. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like naturally, you know, but, um, you know, things turned. We got married. When y'all get married? What age? Twenty-one and nineteen. What made y'all feel like y'all were ready for marriage at that young age? Oh, I don't. You let know me, what? Let me yeah, say tell that part. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. She said, "Tell that part." See that? Um, <laughs> um, tell that part. I'm gonna say this. We supposed to got married. I was actually eighteen. Supposed to. Supposed to. Um, but I was listening, and I knew. But I had everybody else telling me, man, you're too young. Yeah. All this sand at the beach, you're a barber. Look at all these females, da, 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 da. And so I had all these distractions. And then also I had family members telling me the same thing. And so what happened was I stood her up on our wedding day. No, you didn't. I did. Why y'all mad? Like, you ain't standing nobody up. <laughs> Not on their wedding day. I heard Not on their wedding day. The bishop. <laughs> right, right. Yes, I want bishop then. I won't pass it in. I was a man. He was he was a young buck. You stood up. You stood I stood up. up. So, so, so had, you had to paint the picture. So y'all were was it a uh -oh. wedding, an official wedding? Oh yeah. And was family and friends be. there. They was coming in town. They came in town. Oh. They came into town. Bought mm -hmm. tickets, everything. Got in the car, drove here. She didn't got a dress. You didn't got your tuxedo. It was planned, and you didn't show up. I told him my stomach hurt. You said well, your stomach hurt. My stomach hurt. <laughs> I ain't gonna make it to the wedding. <laughs> like they do it for church. I said that for my wedding. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, 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 I stirred her up, and she said, don't you ever say nothing else to me again. No, I don't blame her. And I, and, and, you know, and I had to fight. I'm going to tell you, I fought for nine months because the Lord said, you fool. That's your, that's, that's your wife. That's your soulmate. And you letting people talk you out my will. And I had to sit here for nine months, hear her tell me no. I mean, we had just... I it was had, a strong no, too. It was a strong no. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you what was crazy. I'm like, how are you going to tell me no? And I just helped you get a, a boutique, I mean, a, a salon. I just went in half on a salon. Man. And so now, what I had to do, yeah. So I was security for nine months. So when I left cutting hair at the barber shop, I went to help her at her shop to be secure to make sure she got her car, even though she kept telling me no. And I'm going to tell you what was crazy because her employees was in there and said, you don't want them, I'll take them. <laughs> I told them, sit down. And, 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 yeah. and, I don't and, want them, but you can't have them. Yeah. Right, right. And, and so I fought for nine months. I fought for nine months and then she finally gave me an opportunity to take her out. And then after I took her out, I said, guess what? You know what? I know I messed up. I said, my desire is to get it right. And I said, I'm going to wait on you until you say you're ready to get married. And then she told me sooner than later. I, I, she's like, I'm like, huh? I thought she was like at least a yeah. couple months. Yeah. So you know, we, we say end up squash the weed and just go to the justice. That's, peace. She said, yeah. squash all that. We going justice the peace. Right. So we went to justice the peace, and we threw a um, yeah. we threw a uh, reception. reception. Yeah. And then after that, I tell you, we we did it and we planned a, a wedding. And so we took at our ten years, we was about to renew our vows. We took two extra years and paid for a whole wedding. Vote. Um, we invited like 200 some people. She had a dress. We had a vacation. All that stuff that she wanted. And I ended up doing that 12 years later when I upgraded her, her I think, second or third ring. Mm. Why? Because I knew I had messed up. And I knew that I had learned from my man of God. He said, since you messed up, what you got to do is get your heart right with God. 
not to get your heart right with God. Now the very cage that that the cave that that ring come from purchased the whole cage. So I spend the rest of my life trying to make sure I please her because I could have left it. I could have left that moment dealing with people. And this is why it's important with the people that you're around and the people that you let speak into your life. Some of y'all let too many people speak into your life and that's why you're crazy now. And that's why you're missing out on what God has for you because the wrong people are telling you something. And risk, listen, and the person that you're listening to, watch this, they are not sent for God to help you. Teach. They are sent to help somebody else but not you. But you let everybody qualify to take extra space in your head. Woo. And you got to stop it. So, uh, prophetess, what made you decide to give him a second chance after being humiliated, embarrassed? I'm going to paint the picture. Humiliated on your wedding day. <laughs> well, the truth of the matter is I still wanted to be with him. You still wanted to. Yeah, but I had to play hard. <laughs> I, I mean, So for nine gone. months you were just playing hard. Oh, I was just playing it, and I played it well. <laughs> I did. <laughs> but, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of times we'll do things, we, like we'll do or say things. We don't really mean them. Yeah. You know, deep down, I knew he was the one. You knew it. I knew it. I knew he was the one. I so, mean, so when you got married and he didn't show up, what did that? Do you feel like you heard God wrong in that moment? Well, I wasn't living for God. Oh, okay. I mean, you know. <laughs> you just felt like you heard yourself wrong. Oh, you so 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 you you was the same one. <laughs> <laughs> so you weren't living for God then. No. <laughs> <laughs> she was a witness. She's a witness. Oh my God. I was forced to be a witness. <laughs> I'm going to say this that witness helped us out. It did. Yeah. Because when we were dating, her aunt came in town and said, Uh uh-uh, uh, you ain't getting none of that. Her aunt shut the whole shop down. She shut the shop she down. Shop, she shut the shop down. She was a Medea in that age, in that era. <laughs> she shut it down and said, You're not getting none from my Amen. daughter until you get married. Amen. And she shut the whole thing down. She did. So I said that that witness did help us in that in that scenario. That's good. Yeah, yeah. That's good. And so, um, so then you're ain't nobody saying about that. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Say nothing about that." Uh, so as you were, t- so y'all were dating. Y'all got back on the same page by him showing up at security mm-hmm. uh, every day, walking to the car. What did that mean to you? Oh, I loved it. Did you feel that protected. Was... Look at him. Um. Yeah, I, w- I would say I wasn't really looking for protection, so to speak, though. I know, I was but what cool. happened is, like That you was said, his excuse for coming. That was you know, his he, excuse? Yeah, because I told him don't come around me. So his way of coming or getting able to come was to, to give himself be an security. unofficial job. You got it. Yeah, so I, w- I didn't need security, so to speak. He was just there. She was in Portsmouth. So she needs security. <laughs> we was on Rob and the airline. She needed security. Oh, because yeah, every now and then when I went there, they had gunshots. <laughs> So, so she needed security. <laughs> she had the truth. Terrible. <laughs> so, Terrible. And so how did he, what, what moment changed your heart towards him as far as saying, I'm going to go ahead and try this again? I think it was the consistency for me. There it is. Yeah. Boy, when I it tell you consistency, the, we'll win every time. Yeah. <laughs> it was the consistency. I mean, Nine months he straight. never gave up, even though, I mean, I was telling him strong no's, like for real. And see, that's what I believe that we don't give each other enough time for is consistency. Right. You can pretend something for, for a month, two months or whatever. You got but it. But to show consistency because that's what you need in order to get to, to death and we part in a marriage right. is consistency. And you know I want to be so consistent? I had too many people coming at me, trying to get with me, and I did not want to be the wrong one. Mm. The Lord already showed me she was the one, and I knew if I was not preoccupied and stay focused, I would have hooked up with the wrong person. Because I had all kind of people coming. But I knew that if I married that person, I had issues the rest of my life. You knew that at that I young that. age. I knew that young age because the one thing I love about God, even at the young age, I could talk to a person. And then after a while, I don't care how attractive they are, how cute they are, you start seeing some ugly stuff. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. And so I learned then, I learned then, if God showed me that for a reason, and I, ain't, I, ain't, I'm, I didn't know it was God at first. Right. I just yeah. know, why do I see something crazy about them? Yes. And so that's what kept me. And, but I didn't see that in her. Yeah. I saw peace. I saw joy. I saw all these. I said, you know what? What am I doing? That's this girl good, fine. I was jacked up. And she <laughs> was jacked up. Jacked up when she unpacked her stuff, she was jacked up. But these other people, you know, they was, they was models. They was this and they was all that stuff. I'm like, man, am I dating them 
Watch this for their appearance. Mm, mm, that's good. Watch this because if you date somebody for their appearance and you don't know their heart, you're getting jacked up. I'm trying to tell you. And so I was, that's what I was going to go after, but I had got to know her. Yeah. And I knew that, I knew that, guess what? The more I look at her, the more beautiful she is. Jeez. The more Jeez. amazing she's becoming. Jeez. This other person, all attractive, when I look at her, the more ugly she I'm like, Jeez. Lord Jesus. Jeez. And so I realized that, guess what? I know that we stuck on beauty, and I get that. We stuck on looks, shapes, this, this, that, and that's fine. But you got to understand, when all that, when, when gravity hit all that, can you still be with her? Yes, yes. <laughs> because it ain't going to stay like that forever. Yeah. Amen. So when gravity hit it, do I still love you? And so I, got, I had to learn how to fall in love with her character. When the Bible says charm is deceptive and beauty doesn't last, but a woman who loves God is greatly to be praised. Amen. When I tell you that's what we should be storing up our treasure in, and as men, we've been so inundated by uh, BBLs and everything else on Instagram and going after that type of woman instead of a woman with some substance, a woman that ain't going to be too bougie to, to, to change out your bedpan if, if, if God forbid that you were doing with health Come issues. Come on. You know, so um, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that. And, and look, and before you marry them, you got to make sure that, you know, all the extra stuff, let me see without it. There it is. Yeah. Take the eyelashes off. Take the hair off. Let me. <laughs> Take let the makeup me, off. I need to see all that because that's what I'm going to wake up to. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I mean, because you're trying to figure out which one you're going to put on in the morning. I need to see if I like your natural. There it is. You there see what I'm saying? That's and real. so, so a lot of us, we 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 we, we connect with somebody, and it's not the real person. Woo! And that's the problem. We we look at the we look at the Photoshop version of them. There it is. But what the reality is, when I marry you, then you start showing me all your stuff. Can I handle it then? And so, this is why a lot of us got to understand. Listen, I love you, but can I see you natural? There it is. Amen. There it is. Let me see you flaws and all. Yeah. Because that's what I got to wake up to. That's what I got to marry. I'm not marrying an image. I'm marrying a person. Amen. And so if you're going to marry a person, I need to see who you are. If, if, if your man's spraying his hair on and his beard, take it all that all. Let me see how you look. <laughs> what you hiding? See, see where your hairline really... Uh, yeah, uh-huh, because <laughs> if money get tight and you can't get it, <laughs> you don't got a four head, you got a five head, six head, seven head, eight head, nine head. And so, so, so I got to see you... If money get tight and we're saving, how you look? If you can't get the eyelashes, what can we yeah. do with yours? Yeah, that's real. That's real. Um, how many years have y'all been married? 28. 28 Born years. Born on 28 September. 28 September. September 15, yep. What is the greatest adversity being married 28 years? I want, I want y'all to name the top three. Number one, thank um, you. Go ahead. I would say the first one for me was losing three children. That was really, really rough for me. Y'all lost three children before three we kids. had one. Yeah, and that's gonna be, that's another story. Be yeah, we, we lost was... three kids because my wife. A lot of people, y'all, if you followed her, you see that she never knew her biological father, but she was molested by her stepdad, and being molested by her stepdad, she ended up operating in, in spirit of lust, and so the spirit of lust when we got married was trying to have kids in an environment that was not healthy. And so the more we tried, it was not until God sat my wife and I down and said, you guys got to unpack your junk before I bring something else in. Well, you know, the Lord told me, he said, I can't bless no mess. And he said, I need you to tell your husband. He knew that I had been molested, but he didn't, knew, he didn't know the effect that it had on me. And so I sat him down and I told him, you know, while, while we we're making love, I'm thinking about somebody else. Y'all now, hear that? I do not recommend people do that. Unless you I truly say heard for real. from God. Absolutely. I truly heard from God. And it was at that point he began to um, become medicine to me. And that's what the Lord told it was, me. That's yeah. good. The Lord said, don't get hurt. Don't be offended. That's good. He yeah. says, be medicine to your wife. She's unpacking. When I tell you men, I want y'all to hear that. <laughs> when I say I need y'all to hear that, the last few episodes that I've done have been women who have suffered from sexual trauma. Mm. Um, one in five. They say one mm -hmm. in five women, if you were just count around, around this audience right now, one in five women have dealt with any type, uh, some level of sexual abuse. And so as we are um, marrying these women, we have to have the capacity to cover them. 
because if we get so offended because of moments like that, a lot of men can't handle a moment like that. But, uh, and I salute you, King, for being able to be a safe space for your wife, a safe space for, for her to be able to unpack that moment. And so when you look at people who've been married 28 years and you go, oh, wow, that's amazing. Relationship goals, yeah. you can't even handle some of the first conversations they've had. And so you want that, but you're not even built on the capacity level to handle that, those conversations that allow 28 years or even five years or seven yeah. years or 10 years even take place. Yeah. So what did that mean to you when, you when the Holy Spirit told you to share that with your, with your king and you shared that and he gave you a safe space? Oh, my God. I, I just knew, you know, in your mind, you already map stuff out of how it's going to be. It was and it's always totally, bad. Right. It was totally opposite. And... He was like, I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to, I want you to, you know, share, be open. And I did. I mean, it was really just like, I just spilled it all out. But from that, God gave me a ministry. And so that is how Damaged But Delivered was birthed. God will always so, create your platform yeah. out of your pain. Yeah. He will take yeah. your pain and transform it into purpose. Absolutely. Oh, that just blessed my yeah. soul. Yeah. And I'm going to say, it was not, I didn't feel good about it as a man, mm. but when he says that Christ laid down his life for the church, and he said, that's what you got to do for your wife. There it is. He says, husbands, love your wife. As Christ loved the church. As Christ loved the church as he laid his life down. I realized that scripture came real to me at that moment. Because yeah. that moment, I say, that girl talking about another person, man, do you see how many people I can be with right yeah. now? Yeah. So, so that's, the, that's the flesh challenge. Yeah, that ego. And, and I'm like, that girl don't understand. And then God says, be quiet and be medicine to her. Teach. And so I'm being medicine to her, but at the same time, I'm leaving out feeling broke. Yeah. I'm feeling hurt. Teach. I'm angry. I'm yeah. angry at her. I'm angry at God. And then God says, go and work out. So God says, find a hobby. Find something to do to channel all that energy so you can go back home and be whole for her. Talk. And oh. so I had to find a safe space and be around the right people. Because I'm telling you, be around the wrong people to jack oh, yeah. you up. Yeah, you be, out, you be out there in the street. You see what I'm saying? I'll be yeah. out the street doing lolly and everybody. Yeah. And so, so I had to get to a place where I did this so I'd come home healthy. And I was able to nurse her to health. Mm. And this is why we built this strong relationship. Because I was there with her in those lean moments. Yeah. And so when our life got tough, we had already been proven. People say they love a person. You don't really love a person until you go through something. Talk. So you can talk about you love a person all you want. Go through some real <laughs> issues. Right. Because I'm telling you, love, some, it hurts, but it never fails. Absolutely. Y'all don't Absolutely. hear me. It hurts, but it never fails. If you stay in it long enough, you will be restored. You will be recovered. But love sometimes going to hurt you. Absolutely. Yeah. But it's hurting you to break you, not to break you to take you out, but to break you to make you better. You got to understand, you're in a season where God's ready to stretch you to another greater capacity, but you got to be broken in the place you are right now. Absolutely. And so the Lord calls it, me to be broken, calls my wife to be broken, and then he stretched us and added three kids to our life. He had amazing, watch this, he made an amazing career in my life where in 1998, I was able to retire my wife. Mm. I was not a pastor. I was cutting hair, but God favored me because I honored his queen. There it is. And I did it the right way. He says, he says, well, this is what he told me. He says, husbands, he says, I need to honor my wife as Christ honored the church, loved the wife as Christ loved the church. But he says this, he says, dwell with your wife according to knowledge that your prayers be not hindered. The moment I start getting information from my wife on how to make her life better, how to understand why she responded the way she responds, God says, now what I'm going to do, I'm not going to let your prayers be hindered. Whatever you pray for, I'm going to answer. There it is. There it is. When you get married, you got to understand, you get a whole nother level of favor. I'm trying to tell you. And so, but that's why you got to marry right. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Um, I will say for the second thing for me was, mm -hmm. Um, after um, the, I told him that we started having kids um, my first son he was probably about one or two maybe and I was giving him a bath and I had a meltdown I saw myself hurting him sexually like I was abused and my husband said no you're not going to do that he says, you are going to be able to give your children baths. Ooh. And you're not going to hurt them. 
he spoke life into me. He spoke positive words to me so that I could keep going forth and doing the things that I knew I should do as a mother. Yes. But the enemy at that particular time tried to come in and tell me, no, you can't, you can't do that. You're going to start messing with them the same way you were messed with. And I just screamed and he came in and I told him what happened. He says, no, you're going to get right back in there and you're going to do it. Ooh. Yep. He said, you can do all things through Christ. He never, he never looked at me differently. He never started watching me around my son That's to good. make sure that I wasn't going to do anything. He believed in me and he believed that I had enough God in me to do the right thing. And it goes back to what I shared. I really love my wife because I could trust her and know she was loyal. Yeah. Mm. Because I could trust her and know she was loyal, I knew I could love her beyond whatever flaws and whatever she was going through. And I would not judge her, even in her vulnerable moments. Mm. And you got to understand that a lot of you guys have been tested and tried. And in your vulnerable moments, it's not about you bailing. It's about you reposturing and repositioning your heart. They say, am I doing this because of God or my flesh? And I had to make that decision because the devil tried to eat. He'll, it's amazing when God tell you to do something, the devil still tried to attack your mind. Yeah. So the moment I told her that, I was like, you know what? And God says, you trust her. Teach. You love her because she's been loyal and faithful to you. My wife helped me through my career becoming a barber. She the one that helped me get to where I was. And there's no way in the world that what God put together, I'm going to let something destroy it. So I had to work through it, even though I felt different. And sometimes I knew that the God I served was far better and far greater. And I thank God for my wife telling me this in the beginning yeah, and not in the end. Yeah. Because a lot of y'all find out stuff later. Yeah. And now because you're more, you're more able to handle your own business without somebody, you bail. Yeah. But I had to learn. I had to, I'm glad God showed me that. And I just thank God for my wife. Because yes. she's, she's been a blessing to me um, for, t for 34 years, 28 married. And I'm telling you, we're rediscovering each other every year. I want you to give us a third point. What was the, the, the third you thing? You want that me or Bishop? I'm a Bishop. Well, if you got something in your spirit, go and say it because you, you're on the roll. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> What's the third? I was going to let him do a third one so y'all could hear from him. Go ahead, Bishop. You got something? Yeah, go What's ahead, What's the third Bishop. thing you have to overcome? Um, third thing we had to overcome? Knowing I was not a good steward at first. Mm. I wasn't a good steward with my mother. That's mind. a good one. If Amen. it was out, I wanted it. Yep. I was a mama's boy. She wanted something. I sent the money to her and then work, figure out the bills later. Mm. That's good. Not being a good steward. And I was causing problems in my household. And then if, you don't, if I was not careful at first, I was lying to her. Mm. Trying to cover up because I got paid every day. And so I said, I can, I just do this and I get it to mom. But when things came up, I didn't have it. And I was wondering why, I'm going to be honest with you, God was favoring her, but my stuff won't be in favor. Mm. And I'm like, we married, but how God doing so much for her and not me? Then God sat me down and showed me. He said, because you're not honoring your wife, right? You're not doing the right things. You're lying to her. And, and you got to be honest. And it was one day the Lord spoke to her clearly because she came to me and said, son, ain't right. This money ain't adding up. Mm. And she sat me, sat me down, and we had a conversation, and I came clean with her. Then I had to tell mom, I said, Mom, I love you, but I can't keep doing this. And then me and my mom, it, it kind of got a little funny, but my mom came back to me and said, Son, that's the best thing you could have done yeah. because you showed me how to trust God. Yeah. So for me, the third one was finances. It was not until I learned I was not good and let my wife take over that's good. for a season. And after she took over for a season... Then I sat down and said, now, I want you to show me how you're doing it. You and know then, what? That's so good. Good. <laughs> Let me take. God, I love that. The fact that you were humble enough to say, let me allow you to take over for a season. And then humble enough to say, now teach me how to take over. I had to. Yeah. And then 1998, the Lord had me, well, after my wife assisted, I think around 2000. Up until now, I've been taking care of myself. Mm -hmm. But she took it over for like three plus years. And then I said, now, baby, show me how to do it. Because the Lord says, how about if your wife is busy, this happened, or something ever happened, you don't know how to do it. And so I did. And then God breathed on me wisdom and gave me revelation. 
And now I teach people based on what the Lord has showed me on what to do and how to have different buckets. And, and, and so our life is better. I teach people so their life can be better. And it's all because I surrendered and I, and I sat there and bowed before my wife and said, I'm messing it up. And God told me to let you do it. When I say we got to get over pride, and I'm telling you, we as men, I'm, I'll be the first to raise my hand when I was married the first time. It was like um, the level of pride that we have because we want to be a leader. And in leadership, we believe that oftentimes, or at least I believe that leadership meant that I had to be in control over it. Yeah. Instead of leadership meaning being wise enough to submit that which someone else is better at and say, that's what you've been anointed to do. And for you to say, listen, I don't have wisdom in this area. You are my partner. You are my purpose partner. I will submit this to you. You do what you do. And then you came back around and said, now teach me. Uh, that's, a, that's a posture of submission when you yeah. say, teach me. That's what we have to realize that marriage is supposed to be about. The Bible says that one can chase away a thousand, but two can set 10,000 demons to flight. That's that means it. that once you link up with the right person, like you just said, that Come you on. can do 10 times more than you could ever accomplish by yourself because the math ain't mathing if you say one can chase away a thousand that means if i get with somebody else i got one thousand you got one thousand that's two thousand but there's an anointing that god puts over y'all as a combined unit that puts ten thousand demons to flight so how in the world are we being destroyed as christians in marriage and going through divorce that's because we're not operating under the authority and the power and the dominion that god has given us Man, Absolutely. let me tell you something. Y'all finna make me shout right now. I'm finna get off y'all because y'all finna, y'all get me excited. Can I say this one scripture real quick? Go ahead and say it, Father. Hey, listen. Hey, I need y'all to put, put on the screen, guys, Matthew 12, 34 in the message. Mm. Matthew 12, 34 in the message. I want y'all to put that on the screen for me. I want them to see this in the message. Most of the times, what we're dealing with and what we're going through is what you're saying out your mouth. You're saying the wrong stuff. Absolutely. And this is why you're receiving, you, you have what you say. And so some of you singles, the reason you're going through what you're going through is because you're saying the wrong stuff. And the reason um, <laughs> Bozo and everybody keeps showing up is because what you're saying at your mouth. You got to learn how you got to learn how to decree and declare some stuff in your life. Right. But in order to do that, you got to learn how to first start verbalizing the right stuff. Right. Talk about some it. of y'all don't verbalize properly. Right. And so because you keep you putting the wrong stuff in, in, the, in, in the wrong frequencies out there about you and you attracting the wrong characters. And so you got to verbalize. Then you got to learn how to visualize. You got to see yourself the way God wants you to be. And so then you got to learn how to eternalize and say the right stuff out your mouth. Did y'all put on the screen right quick? I want them to see it. Then I'm going to turn it back over to the man of God. Look what it says here in verse 34. I mean, what did I tell you? 30, 34. It says, and the message says this. It says, you have minds like a snake pit. He says, how do you suppose to say um, what you say is worth anything when you... Uh, are so full minded it's your heart wow. not the dictionary what you mean you. watch it what you gives meaning to your that gives meaning to your words let me say it again i apologize it says it says you have minds like a snake pit mm -hmm. how do you suppose that you say what you say is worth anything when you are so full minded it's your heart somebody shout it's your heart it's your heart not the dictionary that gives meaning to your words. You have what you say. And the meaning that you give to your words is how you carry yourself. It's how you position your heart. Out of the abundance of the what? Heart. heart the, the mouth, mouth what? Speaks. speaks. And so the stuff that you're receiving and holding on to is what you can send out your mouth. And so we got to get out the snake pit. And we got to get in the word of God. What does God say concerning you? And this is what you got to understand. If God says that he desired to be married, then guess what? You got to you got to get in the right pool or the right pond. Yeah. Some of y'all in the wrong pond fishing. Mm. You fishing out the pond of your mind, out the pond of your heart, and you still looking at the old stuff. Get delivered from the old stuff so God can bring you some new revelation. God wants you blessed. He wants you happy. He wants your marriage to work. Yes. But what you got to do is you got to get your heart right. Get your heart right. Change your words and start speaking the right things in the atmosphere, and you'll see it manifest in your life. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So as we move to close, and I want to go around the, the panel, and I want you to decree. I want you to say something either over your marriage or something over your single life, something that you're believing God for. Um, and go ahead. We're going to start with the DeShields. 
something we decree into existence. Something you decree it. Say it loud to what, 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 Speak I it out. I decree and declare that the, the shields will be prosperous, that we will be God's example of marriage in the earth, that our family will be blessed, that we will break all generational cycle and curses in both of our bloodlines, and that the, the shields family line will be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. Go ahead, King. Mark it. I come in agreement with that. Um, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start over here. Go ahead. Well, I decree and declare that um, I will no longer be hidden. Mm. I decree and declare that I am no longer broken. I was damaged, but now I am delivered. I decree and declare that God will bring the right person to me and that I will no longer look to the left to the, or to the right and that he will find me where he's supposed to. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Ramondo. Ramondo. God knows me. <laughs> <laughs> decree and declare. I decree and declare that God will heal what has been broken. I've already forgiven and I seek forgiveness for those that I've been with, you know, and I've already done that, so that's part of it. But I believe that God has given me purpose and I have a lot of work to do. And I am, I believe I'm future wife is out there. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There. Amen, amen. Aisha. I decree and declare that I will not lose faith in Knowing that my my mate is out there, I decree and declare that I will see the goodness of the Lord. Yeah. I decree and declare, I decree and declare that I will live wholeheartedly for God. Amen. And no settlement. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Apostle and prophetess. Praise the Lord. Y'all can either say it for yourselves or say it for the people that's watching. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, I decree and declare healing over the people that are watching. Amen. I, I decree and declare even now that there'll be an open-mindedness. I decree and declare that there'll be a humble spirit. I decree and declare that you'll uh, begin to hear the voice of God so clearly that you, there'll be no mistakes about what God is going to do next in this season. I decree and declare even now that God is opening up doors that you thought were closed. And God is saying, now is the time, now is the season that you walk through the door, for I'm opening it back up. I hear God saying this so clearly. For marriages, God said, I am restoring the marriage. You have been feeling like it's over. You've been feeling like I can't do this anymore. But God said, I am restoring your marriage. The doors of communication are opening up. And just as Bishop and I have a great communication, I decree and declare over your marriage, it will be great communication. Amen. That you allow the spirit of God to come in and flow and operate. For the single people, I decree and declare even now, you'll stop hiding, you'll stop sneaking, you'll stop going around doing what you want to do. But I decree and declare you'll open up your heart unto God and things will begin to flow like God intended them to flow. I speak in the atmosphere that you shall not die but live and declare the works of the living God over your life. Hey. In the mighty name of Jesus. Woo. Kudos to all that. Honestly, my desire is for you to take what God has done this morning and put it to work in your life. Amen. All things are possible to them that believe. I don't think it's by happenstance that God had this man of God to be able to be here today and these host of panelists on this, on this stage to share their testimony for you to walk out here and fall in the same stuff that I believe God just delivered you from. Amen. Open your heart, open your mind, make the pivot, make the adjustment, and obey God. Listen to me. The reason a lot of marriages are not working, and I decree, declare the day they start, you have yet dealt with your single stuff. Some of you are still married with single issues. I decree and declare today that every married person in here get delivered from your single past. 
and every single in here, get delivered now before you enter into another, another relationship. Yeah. Because if you believe it's God sent, you got to have the right posture with God. We love you. We appreciate you. And I thank God for you being here today. Woo. So, I decree and declare that I don't grow weary in my well-doing. Um, I decree and declare that I never get into the mindset that this is about me, but that I am a servant of God being used for such a time as this. I decree and declare that as God uh, continues to elevate me, that I operate in transparency and vulnerability, that people may see the reflection of Christ through me. I decree and declare that God continues to heal me from past pain, hurts, uh, disappointments, and God continues to fashion me to be the husband that my wife will be honored to say I do to. Uh, I decree and declare that I continue to be a beacon of light to people who have given up on love, given up on relationships, people who have given up on God, that God allows me to be bold in this season, in this world where people can honestly see what it looks like to serve God. And so I thank y'all so much for uh, being transparent on this podcast. I thank y'all so much for showing up uh, as your whole selves. And I thank you, Bishop and First Lady, for having the heart posture. I mean, y'all don't understand. Y'all deposited something in y'all's testimony that just, I'm going to go back to the hotel and take a nap. Because, <laughs> my goodness, y'all said some stuff that just wrecked me. Uh, but I just, I just saw the anointing of God fall uh, as y'all began to speak. Um, 28 years. And it didn't come easy. Um, and to know that y'all have experienced the loss of three children um, and then God rewards y'all with the same. It's just, it's, it's, it's beautiful. And all the other three we had, the doctors told us to abort. Really? Yes. They told y'all to abort. Why? They said they had, have Dow syndrome. They got limbs that's not right. They have all this. And you need to abort them now. And we said we trust in God. And you said all of our kids, nothing wrong at all. But if we would have listened to man and not God, we almost, they had us so scared, they put paperwork in front of us and said, sign this now or we'll report you guys when these child children are born. And they would not help y'all at all because we told you guys. They showed us 3D and 4D images of our kids. Look at the lungs. Look at this. Look at the leg. Look at the cliff lip. Look at this. Look at this. You do not need to have these kids abort them now. And we said, no, we trust in God. And one doctor left and said, I'm not delivering this. I let our daughter, he said, I'm not delivering your daughter. Because I told you that she would have doubts, all these syndromes, all this stuff. And you guys did not listen. And he walked out. Another doctor had to come in and deliver our daughter. Is my daughter, where's she at now? Where's she at? She's where's she at? Need- She's in the back. She's teaching. I'm going to get y'all for that. Okay, amen. But if y'all can get her to come. But my daughter is 15 years old, an honor student, create, does everything, and the devil won't let us support our daughter. Yeah. Well, you know, Bishop, um, I was at a doctor's appointment. We didn't know anything was wrong with her, so they said. He mumbled under his breath about a kidney disease and something. I said, excuse me? He said, oh, no one told you? No. So he says, we're going to send you for some special testing so that um, we can make sure, you know, that the kidney disease, come on in, Des, the kidney disease, and she had, um, her right foot was twisted or something, and, um, yeah. Come on, baby. <laughs> and this is our daughter. Come on, baby. She's 15-year-old, amazing, Beautiful. entrepreneur spirit. And the enemy wanted us to abort this. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Our sons are doing well, 23 and 24, doing great. And we would listen to the doctors. Me and my wife would have been married with no kids. Absolutely. Absolutely. But God. I used to always hear in the old days, they would say, whose report will you believe? Absolutely. And this Absolutely. is the manifestation of that right yep. there. Whose report will you believe? Absolutely. Queen, I'm proud of you. Mm-hmm. She's talking about, oh, you're kissing me. I'm too old for that. <laughs> yeah. But I'm proud of you. I want you to say something. I know I'm putting you on the spot. I don't care if you say hello, thank you. 
All right, that's good enough. <laughs> you got to take what you can get from teenagers, boy. You got to take what you can get. Right, right. But listen, man, this is what I'm talking about when we say this is a season. It's, God is so intentional. This is a season on my podcast where I coined it Miracles and Manifestations. I never knew their story. I never knew the depths of this. And um, just how intentional God is about what he allows to be showcased to the world and uh, to see this manifested miracle before us and for them to be ten toes down on the word of God in spite of the doctors with all their degrees and all their schooling to say, but I know the great position. Come on, somebody. Because you can know a position or the great position. They decide to lean on the great position. And so, uh, man, this it's amazing. That's why I say it's important who you decide to get married to. Because you could have got married to somebody that says, listen, I ain't about to be giving birth to a kid with such, 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 such. And this is my body. This is my right. right. I can do what I want to. And he has no say so. And she goes and abort the child. Uh, but look at what God did. Amen. Look at what God did. Yep. So what we're going to do now, uh, first of all, let's just give it up for the panelists here on the Dear Future Wife podcast. Wow. And so what we're going to do, we're going to open it up, good 15 minutes. We got about six minutes to, uh, to open it up for some questions. Um, yeah, it's just amazing. Anybody got some questions, comments, whatever? You ain't got to be all spiritual. Y'all come just ask whatever y'all want to ask. Uh, we just open it, open it up for y'all to ask whatever questions y'all have. Put six minutes so we can watch it. We want to respect yeah. people's time, please. Come talk to us. Oh. Perfect. How are you doing? All right. Hello, how are you doing? I'm Brina Daniels, and I follow you on Instagram. I love the panel, and I appreciate you all allowing me to be a guest today. My question is, I know on your podcast you write letters of prayers to your future wife, and I recommend that for all men, by the way, yeah. but as a single person right now, I wanted to know, what do you plan on doing with those letters, and how might we as single women write letters to our future husbands in preparation for them? So it's still a secret what I'm going to do with the letters, but one of the things that I do plan on doing uh, outside of the personal letters that I write to my future wifey is to write a book that's general uh, letters to give, I want to do 365 uh, letters as words of encouragement or words of edification on your journey to the one. And so it's called the Dear Future Wifey Letters. Um, and that would be a book, just, it'd be like a devotional book. Uh, what I do encourage everybody to do is that, it's to write. You know, we've gotten so far away from writing. And I, and I love the fact that we wouldn't even have the Bible if we didn't have people penning letters, uh, the epistles uh, is what it's called. And so at the end of the day, to actually write, um, there's so much power that comes from the written word. And so always write. And what that does is give you top of mind of the things that you desire and also gives you something to look back at to say, look at what God did. Like, I, I really recommend journaling and having a diary, because when you go back in that moment where you felt like there was no way you're going to make it out, I go look at some stuff when I was 18 and I was about to get evicted. And I was like, my life is over. I ain't going to be homeless. I'm going to be on the side of the street, you know, asking people for money. You know what I'm saying? And then I look back and be like, wow, I thought I was about to. That never, ever happened. Yeah. And so to take those times to, to, to write those down. So thank you so much for, uh, for your question. You're I appreciate welcome. it. Thank you. You'll be blessed. Hi. My hey. name is Paula Harrison. How you and doing, just, Paula? Hi. I also follow you, and I have my husband um, watching. Oh, you got your husband watching now. I do have him watching. Was it hard to get him to watch? It was not. He oh. is very open, and God, I knew that God blessed me with him, but I'm here today just to say it is possible. I was married three times, and when I met him, I gave him my everything. I told him everything, good, bad, and ugly, just like I you know, let you know when you invited us here, and I wanted him to know I had nothing to hide. I had nothing to lose because I trusted God, and I knew that God was going to give me whoever he required, from, he desired for me to have. Right. There was nothing that, like I had to, like um, the, the, the prophet said, I had nothing to hold back because he needed to see me without eyelashes and hair and all of this. Right. God allowed me to be totally transparent and exposed, and he loved me anyway. 
and I actually had, um, I don't want to take up all the time, but I actually had shingles um, last year, and my whole face, I couldn't see. I looked at like Herman the Monster, really, and he was like, babe, you're beautiful. I love you, but God gave me the right husband this time. When I say four, time, four times the charm, I knew that I had to stop with myself yeah. and trust God and, and, and get out of my own way. Right. And that's what I did, and I was totally transparent in everything that I needed, and Thank God you. gave me the desires of my heart, a husband that could love me, flaws and all. And I just Amen. Amen. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nikia Williams, and um, I'm 41, and I'm almost empty nesting. They, they almost 16 and 18. The hourglass <laughs> is coming up. Um, one of the reasons I didn't date, um, I've been divorced for over 10 years. My kids were three and one when my ex-husband and I split. I took myself off the market because I was afraid. I didn't know how to navigate the dating world with small children. And right. Even though they're almost grown, what is your advice on not just for myself or other women um, of dating with children because I didn't I didn't do the revolving door they didn't say anything about it but their dad you know um, because a lot of us in this generation we have children coming to the table don't introduce your kids to the to the people until you're sure about what's going on with y'all um, at the end of the day as you're I always say dating is data collection so in, in the data collecting phase is you Get all the data that you need. And when you know, and I'm, I'm not talking about I feel like it's going somewhere. I'm talking about where the man has become very intentional and, and really like talking about marriage, not no boyfriend stuff. I'm talking about, hey, this is my mate. I want to marry you. I want to do that. When those conversations starts coming around, then you introduce the kids to the, uh, and after seeking wise counsel, like if you're submitted to spiritual authority with a pastor or whatnot, uh, if you're going through counseling or whatnot, based on your own trauma, because there's no cookie cutter approach to certain things, whatever your own trauma is, then you start introducing them to the kids after you know for sure that it's about to go towards marriage. So is engagement safe or is that Oh, 1,000% you engaged. engaged. I didn't know I'm engaged too. You may have some bad kids. I need to know what... <laughs> 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 so at the end of the day, you got to know what you, what, what, you know, what, 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 um, cause he's going to be a father to those kids. And so at the end of the day, by that point, you know, it, the kids definitely need to be introduced. What you, what you think, Bishop? I agree hundred percent. Yeah. Once you know you're moving forward and it's official, then you need to introduce them. Yeah. But you, yeah. you don't need to do it prematurely. Nah. Because then you take, you take the risk of running that this don't work. And now you got your kids introduced and they hopes up high. Yeah. And then you don't follow through with it. And, and, then, so that's and, then, not good. and then what happens is you, when you introduce them to, to uh, too many guys, then they call everybody daddy. That's is it. that my daddy? Is that my daddy? Y'all at the grocery store, is that my daddy? No, that's a cashier. That's a cashier. Cashier, baby. <laughs> what would you like to say? Hi, I'm Dewana. Um, first of all, I'd like to say to um, Pastor and Prophetess uh, that I appreciate that you had this open forum. Uh, I'm a visitor here, and I came just to see Latarius, but I will be back because I love the transparency. Yeah. Amen. I, I'm like what Pastor said before, in, in his beginning, talking like church folk always saying this and that and yeah. not getting people healed and not telling the truth, and I, I love it, so I will definitely be back. But Latarius, I turned 50 next month, and I've never been married, and I just, it's so hard to trust out here. It's so many people who I've been on different dating sites. People lie to you, then with somebody dating somebody who's married, all kind of foolishness. Right. What kind of advice would you give, you know, someone looking forward to wanting it? But it's been so many things that have happened that you're a little afraid to step forward. To always lean not to your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge God and he will direct your path. That's good. Reason why that's so important is because our understanding can lead us astray by saying, yes. like you just said, all those things are reasons for me to say, girl, give up. But at the end of the day, I have to not lean to my own understanding. We serve a God that is omniscient. That means all-knowing. We serve a God that's omnipresent. That means everywhere at the same time. We serve a God that's omnipotent, which is all-powerful. So you're talking about a dating situation? That's small to him. And so when I lean into him and say, God, listen, I'm, I'm going to allow you to direct my path, then we literally submit our will to his will and allow God to direct us whichever way we want to go. And he will always connect us to the right person Thank always you. and let me say this if we would ever get to a place all of us where we marry God first there you is. won't keep making the same mistakes there it is you got to really know what marriage is 
is how you treat your marriage with God. There it is. Now that becomes your model if you don't have a model. There it is. And so once you, once you do that, it's, it's so much easier because you know your value, your worth. A lot of us, because we don't want to be by ourselves and we want to be booed up, we just get something that's convenient. Yeah. But once you mature, you find out your, <laughs> your intelligent decision was the worst decision. Yeah. And so you got to make sure that the person that you connect to is based on your intelligent decision. You made the decision. And that decision you made, you find out later, was not a good decision. That's why, like the man of God said, know what God says about it and then use that as a model. Good. Last question. Hey, guys. This was so amazing. Thank um, you. My name is Kaylin. I am 26, and I am single. Um, and I think this question, I don't know if it's for the ladies, but anybody can answer. Um, so I think in my dating life, I noticed a pattern of, like, where I would lose myself a lot. And so... Recently, I've been focusing on, you know, myself and things like that and becoming more content. And I think one of the things I battle with now is a fear of when the time does come of losing myself again. And so it's almost like I'm trying to find this middle ground between like not closing off, but also still like making myself available because I don't want to lose, you know, Kaylin again. You know? Prophetess, that's a good question for you. Um, I'm going to say that um, in, the, in your single state, you have to take time for you. And so what happens is the Bible says when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing and obtains favor with the Lord. And when you're single and you're working on yourself, it, gives, it opens the room or the door for God to send Boaz in. Because here's the thing, God forbid God sends the right one and you're not confident in who you are. This is what people have to understand. When, when the Lord sends your mate, he's not coming to complete you. He's coming to compliment you. And so what he's bringing to the table is going to complement what you already have established. So you, you, have, you have to get to know yourself first. But, but Providence, she's afraid that she'll lose herself. When she gets married, she starts, uh, or get in a relationship, she starts abandoning who she is and gives so much of herself to the guy. Okay, okay. So what, what has to happen is, yeah, that, that is identity crisis. But when, when you're in a, before you get in the relationship and you know who you are, you don't lose yourself. Yeah. Because watch this, if you keep the doors of communication open, I, I constantly, like, even I, I tell my husband, I don't like that. I don't want to do that. Or Good. every, what, five years or so, we're changing. Yeah. We don't, I, didn't, I don't do the same things I used to do. So you have to communicate. And if, you can, if you're not a good communicator, you have to learn how to communicate. That's how good. am I going to express this? Sometimes he'll be like, babe, you're a little strong. So, you know, sometimes I got to tone it down. But, I mean, you have to learn how to communicate because if not, then you will lose yourself. If you can't express yourself to, your, to anybody, not, not even in a relationship with a man, I'm talking about to anybody in the world. Learn how to communicate, period. And then you can communicate when you get in a relationship. That's good. And don't let yourself become timid. What you got to do is this, is know who you are, be true to the authentic you, and if you get it, somebody in your life and you start seeing yourself changing, that's not the person. You should never lose yourself in a relationship, but you always should lose yourself in God. So the only person you should lose yourself into is Christ. When it comes to a person, you need to be the real you. God wants the real you to show up in a relationship. Yeah. Because if you don't show up, then you can't help that person that God connected you with. Teach. And so what you got to do, I'm serious, if you're in a relationship and you start finding yourself going outside and not being who God called you to be, then you need to question and say, is this the one before I get married? Because if you fix it up front, you don't have to worry about it manifesting later. Yes. But if you don't deal with it up front, then guess what? It'll haunt you later. There it is. So handle it up front. Don't lose yourself. Please, whatever you do, do not lose yourself. Stay true to who you are. Let God use you because God has an assignment for you as well. And don't let the devil trick you up and think to make somebody else happy. You can't be who you are. Good. Thank Good. You. Well, y'all give it up for this panel. Give it up for them. Amazing job. I'm the Terrace R. Whitfield. Give it up for 757 in the building, y'all. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently. And don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.